All right, we are back live early this Saturday morning. Uh, search for Guru Dynasty Mir, and we have Miss Nana Shanti with us uh, early this morning. Hello. Oh, whoever's gonna uh, come on. Uh, let's get some more people in the chat room first before we get started. Yeah. But uh, today we're going to be discussing uh, colorism and uh african beauty standards let me get this son uh, carlos good morning how you doing you're first carlos jean you are first in the chat uh let me the sun is in my face let me turn the camera to... okay that's better all right well, okay that's better right there so uh like i said today we're going to be discussing going to be discussing colorism and uh african beauty standards and this stems of course you had the dove ad uh that was very controversial that uh came out a couple couple weeks ago but last week uh there was yeah. a controversial nivea ad in ghana uh which basically said that if you want fairer and brighter skin suggested to use nivea am, am i correct is that what the ad said nana yeah right um now is, is skin bleach bad in ghana because i know in some countries it's bad it is well i think what i have learned is the ingredient that causes the skin the skin bleaching um hydroquinone in very like high level in very small doses i guess it's good for dermatological like reasons but and it's banned in ghana you know mm -hmm. it's banned in ghana for a while now it's banned in ivory coast um uh, it's been banned so, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if it's banned in uh senegal because i see a lot of skin bleach he has a couple when i go to senegal so i'm not yeah, sure i guess it hasn't been, been banned then but yeah um ghana's banded ivory coast is banded for a while now so i guess in the case of nivea what they've done is to like not include that ingredient that has been banned but what we don't know is what they put in it that makes them that it's going to um, make you get fairer skin. So there has to be some other ingredient that they've put in it that has that that gives them the you know the impression to give to people that if you use this, it's going to make you fair or it's going to make you this, going to make you that. So they found an intelligent way to bypass that. But for the most part, bleaching creams are banned in Ghana. Yes. So do you think, do you think in this, uh, I guess, this lotion, do you think there's some type of skin bleaching agent? agent or are they saying that to attract consumers who are interested in skin, uh, bleaching their skin? No, no, you there? Uh oh, it's a fairly yeah. Okay, can, can, can you it's hear me? It's a fairly new product. Yeah, I can hear your screen not moving. Yeah, yeah, you're uh, you're going in and out. Okay, hi. That's what's happening here too? Okay. Good morning, Nancy. Nana, are you there? I'm here. Okay. All right. Go. Go ahead. I, I hear. I hear you. Go ahead. I said because it's a fairly new product. It's everybody's guess right now if there is actually. Um, and a, a skin bleaching ingredient in it, or it's just a very clever way of getting people to buy into something that is they can't get legally anymore. Right. You know, I don't know if there is in fact something in there, or you know, um, it's just a, a way to get people to you know come get practice. You can go get it in the pharmacy because it's banned. So here we are. You know, it's anything right now. Okay, so I think we have to first discuss because the you know the title of this this uh, stream is colorism and the African beauty standard. So we have to first break down you know what's considered the African beauty standard, right? And because of colonialism, the African beauty standard really 
and it's mm -hmm. changing, but for the most part is the European beauty standard. Uh, so with that being said, uh, do you think Nib is, is aware of that and that they're playing on that and playing on uh, not just African women, but African men as well, their, their insecurities? Because when I went to Benin, I saw a lot of skin bleached people, and it's so and Senegal. I see it, and it's so bad because yeah, you know, their skin is fair, then their knuckles are, are black. Black. It's like, oh god, it's so bad. So, uh, yeah. what, what it's just terrible. Yeah. yeah. I mean, talking about colorism in the in an African sense, it is something that is so like woven into the fabric of like countries. I don't know if we can ever unravel it, but a general like idea of it is that people, I mean, a lot of African people don't look like me. You know what I mean? A lot of African people, I mean, we're, we come in all shades. We say all the time, we come in all shades, but a lot of people who are on the other spectrum, who are of, like a lighter skin tone tend to get access to like jobs, get access. things that like they get to act in movies even when they don't know how to act um they get to be the the face of company a crime being called like all awesome, that you think will not even exist on the african and the it's just something that that is so there right now, you know. There has been some instances where um, companies that are hiring like receptionists, you know, like frontline managers will actually insist that you have to be lighter skinned in Ghana, I guess in like Senegal, wherever, everywhere. Now, are these like black owned companies or are these? These are black owned, African owned companies that put out these ads shamelessly shamelessly put out these ads um people support them you have girls who i mean it, there, there's a, a there's a crisis you know people need jobs so you literally have people arguing about immoral or not moral. It, it's just the whole african men who are in power most of times when they get married, their married wives white women. marry white women or light skinned women or fair women. I know you would see it all the time. A lot of the presidents, their wives are very lighter skinned. Or, or, like, or like Kwame Korma, you just have one. I think that it married an Egyptian woman, you know what I mean? And it wasn't like as if he was in love with her or something. Something. that that is okay for me you know if you're in love with someone you can marry whoever you want but he did it purposefully you know he did it in the Egyptian woman instances I, I did I can't even bring and you have like soccer players in Africa also marrying lighter skin tone women so what it, it just tells you Hey, Nana, you're real, you're real choppy. Nana, I was, I was going to say, they're saying in the chat room, you're real choppy. It keeps going in and out. Oh, well, I hope, I hope it gets better now. Better now. Is it better now? Uh, a, a, a little. Just, just keep, I guess, talking and then we'll see what happens. Yeah, when, when it, when it goes out, let me know. So I will like switch, um, the. Wi-Fi thing. Okay. Oh, go ahead. okay. Yes, Nancy. She's from Nancy was asking is from Ghana. So I was yes, she's from yes, she's from Ghana, Nancy. All right, go ahead, Nana. Yes, I'm from Ghana. Yes. All right, go ahead. We, so we, um said, yeah, I'm like I'm right. And if for, for, so what it means to people that look like me is that if you want to get ahead, you know, you need to be of a lighter skin tone. You need to tone you need to bleach, you need to try to make something of you that will appeal to this, you know, to wherever it is that you're trying to go. You know, I mean, I can't even think to someone who's like really dark or something, who's like, 
who's like a big presenter. I, I can't even think about it right now because that's how it is. It's just the order of the day. And that, that it, unfortunately, that's just what it is. Okay. Now, I think you, you gave a response to it, but not an Nkrumah, who's pretty much the father of God. He right. had a, um, you know, some people say she wasn't white, but she was white. Uh, or we'll just say a Caucasian Arab wife. Right, so yes. A little colorism. And from my understanding, his, I don't know how many kids he had, but his daughter married an Italian man. Yeah. Um, so for the most part, his, not in from his grandson or daughter, for the most part, is white. Yeah. Uh, do you think that has, that might play or might be a major factor have an influence in regards to colorism in Ghana? I mean, I feel like, like a lot of, um, I remember when I was younger, a lot of um, people like my mother's age, they used to talk about why Kwame Nkrumah would um, go out of his way to go marry someone who was like that skin tone. And I feel like not, he, he did, I think he was a very strategic guy, you know, maybe in his quest to unite the West and the North or something, he thought maybe it would be- And we, we discussed that on, Thursday, I believe, and that's what uh, yeah. he's from Ghana. He was saying that. He said that's the reason. Yeah, but, it didn't, Kuma, but, it didn't, yeah. but it didn't work, though. It, 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 it did not work. Like, a lot of things that he wanted to do did not work. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, he tried. He tried. You know, it's like a, I always saw him as some kind of King Solomon kind of guy mm -hmm. who would, like, try to use, like, you know, he was friends with MLK, friends with Dubois. He was friends with Garze. Mm -hmm. He was friends with... um. What's his name? Kyle, the guy that just died in Cuba. I've forgotten his name. Fidel like, Castro. 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 He was friends with Mandela. Like he's a very strategic guy. So mm -hmm. I think in his marrying, you know, um, he uh, w went off and did up. I don't think he set the tone for that because another thing that people don't know is like when the um, Europeans came to Ghana, they settled in like the in the south right mm -hmm. near the shores and they married a lot of your women they had a lot of kids with them um people still carry very european names in like the parts of the, that country where the european well, well, not, not to cut you off your you know, i guess the well, henry rawlings is a product of that correct rawlings father is scottish you mm -hmm. know and her and his mother lived in these coastal areas where the europeans settled mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So when that happens, the, the the kids that come out of it, the biracial kids that come up out of it, they are a lot. They be, they belong to an elite um, upper class people, not just based on their skin tone, but based on the fact that mothers are married to these men who were merchants or who had some sort of money. You know. So I think the general idea is, the lighter skin you are, the more upper class you are. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The more like the the more you um look like someone who has a little whites in them, the more money you may have, the more opportunities that you may have. So I don't think Kwame Nkrumah said that. It's I think it's a it's a, a thing of a byproduct of um colonialism and slave trade and all of that. It's just a byproduct. Okay. So, so you, and you said that one of your your family or friends in Ghana said that they're actually taking down the ads. Yeah, I last night she tagged me in a photo. She's like, "Look at this," and they're taking down the ads because um, for people who want to like look further to understand what this campaign is about, they can go on Twitter and check "Pull It Down Now" as a hashtag. And they will see that a lot of people were raining on them. The celebrities were raining on them, and everybody and then on a tirade i was almost like i was so upset you know i went on the tirade i wrote them i was writing on their pages i just wanted them to see that we were it is that they were doing it, it was not okay you know so it, it it just became a whole thing but i really don't blame nevia for of our ignorance you know they are a company they need to turn a profit right and if we are stupid or we're not we're not in touch with who we are 
we don't know where the world is going right now and we still want to be in an age where we think that being lighter is better they are going to make money off of it because that's their only job in ghana in africa to make money you right know? it's kind of like how you know and i talked about this before how ghana ghana banned trophy but mcdonald's right. and fried chicken and is KFC, a lot of yeah you yeah, know. their only job is to turn a profit. So if you think that your local food is not good enough for you because it makes you bush or it makes you like, you know, too local and you want to eat. Now they keep going, you're going, you're going in and out again. Nah. Um all that. Saying, chicken with palm oil. You That's your business. Like their I'll job. Say, you're, you're going. You're going in and out. You're going in and out again. Is it better now? I don't know. Yeah, it's better now. Go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. I keep seeing this light. But I don't know what it. Is. My hang out. So. Yeah, so I was saying like Nivea is just turning a profit. That's your job to turn a profit. So whatever works. No, no. I don't think it's a very, you know, socially aware, a socially responsible thing to do as a company. So I'm glad that they've seen the error of your ways. Now, will they actually pull the products from the market? That's a, that's a whole other thing that I don't know if you're going to do that. And you probably already, you, man, this, no, let me just go this way. Okay. And you probably already uh, answered this, but so you're saying there's a new skin bleaching agent that's not banned that might be in this Nivea uh, lotion. Is that, is that what you're So the thing that I gathered from, because I went on there and I wanted to see what products were in there. And they said there were these berry extracts. So this dermatologist, this Ghanaian dermatologist was talking about how that, that compound kind of slows like, like the production of melanin in your skin. Mm -hmm. It kind of slows it down and it doesn't let it, you know, like protect you from the sun anymore. So now this um, agent is, is protection for you. You know, so what it does is like, we all know that if you slow down melanin in your skin, what it does is like, it just, because that's the thing that produces the color. Right. You know, melanin pr produces the color in everybody. You know, and just in Africans, it just produces a lot more because we're supposed to be in the sun all the time. Right. So right. if you are um, slowing down the production of this thing that's supposed to be protecting us, what you're telling me is that you're trying to make sure my skin gets the least get like the least uh, amount of color, which is in a sense toning and bleaching. Like you can use as many words as you want. You can use scientific whatever, but at the end of the day, it, it's the same thing by a different name. Okay. You know? so, so how was the reaction in Ghana when to our aqua when the ads uh, went up? Like the, the locals, how did they feel about it? So I caught the wind of it from um, a Ghanaian musician. Um, his name is Fuse. He's actually like based in the UK, mm -hmm. but he's not right now. So he's and people were telling stop publicity off of Nivea. Action was pathetic to say the least. It was, it was for me. It was very disappointing that people were coming to the. Uh, Hey, Nana, you're, you're going in now. Yeah. They meant that it's used. The All right, is it better now? Um, yeah. Or is it so choppy? It's better now. It's better now. Go ahead. I, swear, I don't know what's going on. All right, so people were saying that maybe the lotion was formulated for people who are lighter skin tone. But, Dinas, have you seen the video? The video ad. I, I, you know, let, let me look at it right now. I, I saw the actual, the, just the uh, the billboard, but I didn't see the video. The video ad. I'm going to take a look at it right now. This lady um, took the lotion and she was applying it on her skin. 
and you they they showed like a graphic where her skin was like peeling back like three layers like three skin tones are you serious i'm telling you 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 just have to look at the video so if the billboard was like up for explanation the ad was not up for explanation yeah you know, and, and i read and i read the uh response that they yeah get. like you can just go on instagram and hashtag like nevia or something and see the ad like literally like peeling back her skin tone then she was good and it was like oh I, like are you her sister you look so young <laughs> like but just trying to say that because she's this lotion and she's lighter now she's automatically young no. and these are all the words that they're using for women who like anti-aging stuff like okay so let me just go use this product hoping that i stay young okay so let me ask you this so now this is what i'm noticing in ghana you guys have mm -hmm. shea butter yeah shea butter i use shea butter that's all i use like yeah. all natural shea butter why have ghanaians gotten away from something natural and healthy like shea butter and now they're using this crap again as as incomes go up you know um as the economy grows people are going to start liking westernization to civilization mm -hmm. you know people are, are going to think that um the more expensive something is the more difficult it is to get the better you know the thing would not um you, you were not, talking about why really. your access yeah i was gonna say you might because connect the, the connection going in and out you might have to cut off the video uh portion because of the uh the connection unless you have like a different uh So you know what? Let me let's go to the Wi-Fi. I'll call you back. Okay, you're gonna hang up call right back. Hello. Hello. Ah, right, come on. I sorry about the uh, technical difficulties. Uh, thank you, everyone who's on this chat early Saturday morning. I appreciate it. Uh, we have Nana Ashanti on, and if you're late to the chat, we're just discussing the um, the Nivea ad that was up billboard and um, commercial that was running. All right, Mrs. Ashanti is back. Nana, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm like. Okay, I think that's better. I think that's better. Yes, because I had to switch over to um, another network to be able to use it. So okay, we're good. We're good. Now. We're good now. Okay, go ahead. Okay. All right. So we, we were discussing. Uh, you know. I'm sorry, it's my mother. She's right here. Like. Tell she, your mom. I said, tell, bring, bring your mom. Tell your mom hello. Bring her on. Mom, do you want to say hello? Okay, tell the couple say hello. <laughs> she want to say hello. She wants to be in everything. I swear. Tell the couple say hello. Hi. So hi. Here's hi. Hi, Mr. Shanti. Hi. Yeah. All hey. right. Bye. 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 <laughs> tell, tell your mom I, I will be in Ghana next month. Oh, he's going to be in Ghana next month. Okay. All right. Bye, Ma. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about shea butter versus okay. Nivea. Right. I feel why, like. Why Africans? I don't understand why Africans prefer. Nivea versus shea butter. I mean, you see my mom, she's all she's like 55 or something. The only mm -hmm. thing she ever used on skin is shea butter till this day. Like mm -hmm. she would go crazy if she can't find it. Because right. she that's her thing. She's been using it. and she like people argue about her age all the time, but 
what people don't realize is that they think it's for people that look like me because we are the um we are the bottom of the barrel we are the people that don't want to, we are the people that don't want to evolve we're the people that don't want to change they don't see it as something that is protecting you like i remember i went into mac the other day with my friend and the girl was touching my face and she's like what do you use and i said i use shea butter she's like oh my god no you need to stop using that it's not good it doesn't make your skin buttery it doesn't do i was like yeah i've been using it for 20 something years old and I'm here, <laughs> you know, people don't respect it. They think like, you know, as incomes go up, mm -hmm. as um, people are traveling around and people are able to afford things, they are going to, as you, they are going to um, prefer things that they've seen in other places over their own, you know, for some reason, um, as you're getting more money, I guess things become too local for you and, you need to kind of sort of like evolve. So it's part of the evolution and <laughs> things that is going on that's making people prefer things like that. And I think even this one is like soft, you know, nervous thing. I've heard people use all sort of things, all sort of combinations for their skin that, oh, same one, same one my mother uses, same one. Got it right here. This is, this is an empty bottle, of, but I have a big... Yeah. In my in my bathroom right now. Yeah, same one that she got some love. Yeah. I just happened to use Palmer's because that's well, Palmer's the, oh come on. Palmer's yeah. is the, the commercial store bought stuff that they put all the uh additives in. You gotta get the hundred percent pure. Yeah, these shape. are from I mix. I put this stuff in my hair, I use this for everything. Yeah. I just happened to use Palmer's. My mom, my mother, she's she's used that for forever. Like that's the only thing she would like ever use. But I, I guess people want to come. It's the same thing with the food, right? Like mm -hmm. why are people like go thinking that eating like KFC is better than eating like Wache or something? Like people think that the more money you have, the more expensive something is. You know, it shows your status. So that's the thing that's going around right now. So, so you're saying they consider chofi uh, bush meat in Ghana? Are you serious? Well, they don't consider it bush meat. What they 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 say it's not wholesome, like it's not healthy. I mean, it's not, but right. I don't want to eat that than fast food. The fat, yeah. Well, people don't see it like that, you know. And I feel like the it, it wasn't really the people because people will eat it today if they could find it. You know, mm -hmm. they'll eat it today. If they could. I'm sure people sneak it all the time mm -hmm. um, with your imports and stuff. But the government, there was this new government that came that he was really like bent on like changing Ghana around. And mm -hmm. one of the things that had to go was, you know, imported chicken and imported turkey tail and imported stuff. It just had to go. I feel like it was just a consequence. Oh, so the turkey's imported. Like, where is it imported from? I know we're kind of off subject, but... I, I, I think most of the stuff that come into Ghana, when, like, the meat products are from Brazil, you know, because I hear people say, like, Brazil chicken and stuff, so I'm thinking you're from Brazil. Somebody in the chat room, uh, A.V. Satu, India. India, you must be from Senegal or Gambia. Yeah. She says that uh, they say not to use shea butter, but they use it in lots of products in the u.s are they oh yeah butter in america in, uh, in ghana sorry so are, are they promoting not to use shea butter in ghana oh no not at all okay yeah no 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 okay. not she even. Says it. she says it. okay so then you responded on nivia's page yes i did can, can you can you read what you wrote well what happened was that yeah That's i have it right here what happened was that Nivea put out an apology, right? Let me read the apology to you first. Uh -huh. It said, we have recently noted concerns on social media by some consumers regarding a Nivea natural fairness body lotion communication in Ghana. We would like to emphasize that this campaign is meant in no way to demean or glorify one person's needs or preferences in skincare. So you can hear the dog whistle right here. All right. He said, Nivea as a global leader in skincare has developed a safe product that contains natural ingredients and in UV filters, which protects the skin from long-term sun damage and premature skin aging. 
as well as reduce the production of melanin, which over time can lead to an uneven skin tone. The product works with the skin to reduce dark spots and achieves a more even skin tone. Now we at Burst Off, we develop our products with the objective of helping consumers to maintain their skin health and beauty in all its diversity. And that's why we have a wide range of products designed and we respect consumers' rights, blah, 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 personal preferences. What this, when I saw this, what came into my mind was they're saying, hey, we are making products for people who want to bleach and people who want to stay the way they are. So we're in no way trying to say that choosing this product is better than choosing another one, which is a, a, a very nice way of saying. That's an oxymoron. How, people who want to bleach and people Thank who you. Where they are. How, what about Thank those? You. It was like, I was so, I'm like, are you apologizing or are you advertising? Like, what are you doing? You know? And they were like, well, what what killed me? What what was like, I was like, you guys are still like doubling down on reducing the production of melanin. Like, Dianus, you've been in the African sun, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I have. It's a different kind of sun. You oh, know, yeah. Trust. it's not. I know. It's a different kind of sun. What do you mean reduce that? It's a reason why it's there. There's a reason why I'm darker because where I come from, the sun doesn't like really set like that. You know what I mean? I need it. I need it. We need it. So, what do you mean you're slowing down the production? So, I went on there and I said, your non-apology apology will not change the fact that this is a disgraceful product that you will try to play on col colorism and the insecurities of african women to sell lotion that alters their skin complexion is not socially responsible you used fairness in your ass to mean attractiveness in your promo you guys are not sorry you know exactly what you're doing and as a global brand this is such a shame pull down the ads and the product is what I told them. And what were some of the responses? And some, uh, someone sent me a message actually. She's like, um, Nana, sometimes we need to wait to understand what I, and I screenshot this message. It was so funny. She's like, we need to wait to understand, um, what it is when part when companies put out your products, promotions, what this one meant was that, for people of a lighter skin tone, it will help them to not get dark. They did not say dark people should purchase the product. As was some girl called Esther, she sent to me. And one guy called One Love, he's a he's a um he's a musician. He actually screenshotted my message and put it on his page. And he said, he just I just want to know why they did not put these ads up in the West but decided to come and put it in Africa. They, see, that's the thing. They, they don't put that stuff up in the West. In fact, I mean, I'm sure people skin bleach, black people in America skin bleach some. Absolutely. It was a big thing back in the 50s, but Absolutely. people don't see the ads up. Mm -mm, they dare they, not. I mean, look at what happened to Dove. Dove did an ad where it was like misconstrued or like they, it wasn't thought through. And look at what happened to them. People dropped them like, you know, People drop them. People won't even touch Dove again ever in their lives. So they dare not because they know where their bread is buttered, right? But right. when it when it comes to us, you know, we're 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 they don't they don't care. They don't respect us. You know, they only like our money. They don't respect us. Mm -hmm. No, exactly. They want your money, but don't they respect you. Money. And they they put up an ad in um I think it was like Dubai or somewhere where they said white is purity. This is Nivea. Mm -hmm. And Middle Easterners also have a problem with colorism. Yeah, yeah. Skin, colorism. They have a problem with colorism where if you're like not light enough, you're not attractive. You know, I had one of my friends, she's from Kuwait. She always used to like complain about that, like how she's like, she's from Kuwait mm -hmm. and her skin is a little darker, you know, and people don't think that hair, like she looked attractive or whatever. So you put this down and they tell you, take it down, take these ads down, take your product. And Nivea complied. Why? Because the Arabs, they have the money 
and you will respect them. You know what I mean? You will respect them. But we, they don't respect us because we have people defending them, people going out of your way to defend them. So why would they? Why would they respect you? You're not even united, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's that's crazy. And then I want to I want to touch on the uh, the shade uh, moisture controversy. Oh yeah. And so it's weird how I guess with the shade but with the shade moisture controversy, controversy, people we were black people were upset that you know they used a white model and she right. was talking about how she's not comfortable in her skin. I guess and right. how she's more right. comfortable with skin now with shade moisture, and we were outraged because of you know pretty much just the history of just colorism. Right. The European beauty standard being forced on us that, you know, made people uncomfortable in and uh made black people uncomfortable in their skin. And right. they had the white model say she's uncomfortable. Like, come on. Like, like what are you talking about? Yeah. Has been, geared, has been geared towards her to make her comfortable in her skin. Right. And so I, I just think, you know, I don't know if there there are any black brands in um in Ghana because I mean you guys have your own natural products but yeah. there just needs to be safe spaces are that just target black people in regards in, in, in the beauty in the beauty yeah. uh, industry that's uh, happening that just focuses strictly on, on yeah beautiful natural black skin and, and hair because I mean you look at Rihanna what was it Fenty she's she doing pretty good right yeah she that that product was amazing. I had a video on Shea Moisture, but I had to take it down because the Why? Like, the production like it, the you know like I'm kind of like the lighting was not right. It's just some vanity issues, but I took it down. But what what happens with these black brands and the reason why they have to appeal to audiences like this is because they do not have the investment. Shea Moisture took a big like capital in, um, injection from. Um, I've forgotten their name, but yeah, Mitt Romney sits on the board of that company. Oh, see, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. They have billions that. of dollars in assets under management. Um, Domino's is part of that company. Um, Pizza Hut is part of that company. Like, there's so many companies that 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 um venture capitalists or whatever they are, like inject money into. So when they come, your com Shea Moisture now as a small black brand. It's competing with Domino's. It's competing with Pizza Hut. It's competing with all these things to try to turn a profit. So what's going to happen is that they have to make sure they are marketing their products to a broader um, audience to, to be able to turn that profit. And what's get, what happened in Shea Moisture's um, case was that they um, – they had to widen your product base and they had to widen the audience. So they had to be patronizing. They have to, you know, use the right, like wedding, the language. In. And now the, the base that we, that started the thing in the natural hair community, we're not the nucleus of it anymore because it has expanded. Mm -hmm. And so for them to, you know, if I, I say all the time, like if you're marketing a product to me and I don't see someone that looks like me and I'm not buying it, because what you're telling me is that it's not meant for me. You know, I'm, I'm just, I'm not going to buy it. So what you're doing is just trying to get money. Same thing with these um, African brands. Like, Alafia is a very good West African body hair. Like, I love Alafia more than any natural hair products that I've ever used. Alafia is now in Whole Foods because they got a huge capital injection, you know, they got a huge capital injection now. They're not just available in um, West Africa anymore. They're available here in the U.S. Who knows what they're going to require of Alafia to do? You know, who knows what they're going to require of them to do? We have Shea Butter Cut, um, Cottage in Ghana that's also coming up. They have, like, awesome products, awesome natural products. They don't even add anything. They just package natural stuff and sell it. But if they, if we, if I had the money, right, if I had a company an investment company that invested in small businesses and I go to Shea Butter Cottage and I tell them, hey, I want to help your business grow. So here's some money for you. Just advertise and make sure you get me sales. They're going to advertise to Africans mm -hmm. you know? because I'm in there. I know what it means for you to want that money. But when Mitt Romney's company comes in and invest in your business, you essentially don't have control over it anymore. 
All I want is I want my money. So I don't care how sacred Shea Moisture is to you. I don't care how sacred Alafia is to you anymore. All I want is my money. You know, so I think that's what's happening with this company. So we're not coming together to help them grow. So whoever comes with them, Carol's daughter um, was a very good. You can't go ahead. Carol's, da Carol's daughter um, is a good natural hair brand. I still uh, like, use this stuff, but they sold to L'Oreal. So now they have to make sure they're making money and at whatever it takes for them to make. I saw their ad the other day on TV, you know, and it was everything from like the lightest, palest white person you can see to the darkest, dark person you can see. Now they've extended the line, you know, because they need to make money. So, well, yeah. well, let me ask you this. In order for a black business to make money and be profitable and compete in the marketplace, do they have to compete to, I mean, do they have to, I guess, uh, market to everybody? Can they just focus on their base, which is, which is black? Well, for me personally, I mean, I don't think they necessarily need to compete, you know, mm -hmm. because there's some things that, there's some things that are, are just what it is. When you go to like Africa, up overwhelming majority of people in Africa and African, you know, so why not concentrate on on extending? I was thinking this. I was thinking the same thing. Yeah, yeah majority of like I can say like ninety five percent of people in Africa are African. Why don't you extend your product line to the continent? We have one point one billion. Oh, I would say you know, and I would say the same thing. Instead of Nivea having that ad, that should have been a Shea Moisture or Carol Dodd. Exactly. Break into the market. People have the money. People are earning the money break into the market and bring things that we actually will use and will need and are not patronizing you know there are 1.1 billion people there are like people who like the middle class is growing people have the money for the products you know just extend it into africa you don't need to people think that getting out of there and going into the market in the u.s or going to the market in europe is the pinnacle of like their success right right that that is what is happening but if they would look around them and see that if i do this well here i don't have to go outside like i don't have to go anywhere i could just stay here and be like profitable but people don't know that no you're right so let's do this um give a shout out to the people who have all who are who are always supporting me um on the live stream chima thank you so much doug i see you Nancy, good morning. Nancy, where, where are you in New York, Nancy? You're in France? Uh, who else? B7 Cinda, thank you so much for coming on. You know, everybody, thank you for coming on this morning. Uh, I have to get ready to go. My son has soccer. Oh, okay. Yeah, so then, so I have to take him to soccer. But let me ask you this, in closing, and, and I'll let you close it out, and also share yeah. with people your contact information. Uh, some people wanted to know if you had a YouTube page. I think you do. But... I do have a YouTube page. The problem with my YouTube is like I'm lazy. <laughs> okay, well, there, there it is. So, but it's there. It's, it's there. there. It's there. Uh -huh. um, and you know me, I don't mind coming onto your page as well and discussing uh, whatever to you yeah, know, sure. get, get, it back, get it back up and going. Yeah. Um, so what... What do Africans need to do? Because for some reason, I think here in America, we're more conscious when it comes to colorism yeah. um, than Africans. It is not saying a lot because you still see a lot of the you know bad weed and stuff like that yeah. in both places. But when it comes to colorism, I think we're a little more conscious here in America. What do we need to do in Africa to establish an African beauty standard and move away from the European beauty standard? I mean, there has. Oh, no. Go ahead. Put this on mute. Go ahead. Put this on mute. <laughs> there has always been uh, things that are like secular to Africans, things that we, you know, do. It, and the fact that incomes are rising does not mean that you throw away things that you grew up with to go and adopt somebody else's. Because now um, we have like Europeans using things like our sponges that we used to bathe, they just discovered it. You know, they're, <laughs> they're using like um, charcoal to clean their teeth. Like they just discovered it. It's like things that we've been doing forever. 
and they are now discovering it for us. You know, we don't need to throw away things away just because, you know, there's a way you can live your life where both your Africanness and whatever else you are can coexist peacefully. But you don't throw away who you are just to go and adopt something because you think it's better. You know, it's not better for you. You know, it's not better for you. So my thing is that uh, this issue of colorism, some people don't even see that it exists, you know. Some people, don't, for you to um, solve a problem, you need to acknowledge its presence. And people don't even like think that colorism exists. So it's going to be a long road. But the thing I can say is that you don't need to throw anything away. Nothing is better than the other. You just need to choose something that you make, make sure like you're being authentic to yourself. You don't have to go out of your way to throw who you are away just to go and adopt somebody else's, you know? Oh, Dinus, your, 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 your audio is out. Your audio oh, is my, out. Hold on, hold on, my bad. Let me unmute it. Okay, unmute. got it. It's back. I'm back. Okay. Yeah, I was saying, go ahead and share with everybody your uh, your contact information so they could uh, reach out to you. Okay, so my blog is www.nanaashanti.com. I have a blog post on this. I have blog posts on other things that uh, will be of interest to your audience. My YouTube is like a huge um, jumble of things. There's everything on there. There's hair, there's makeup, there's food, there's like issues, there's everything there. That's Nana Ashanti. Facebook, Nana Ashanti. Um, Twitter at Nana Ashanti blog and at, um, <laughs> and at Instagram, Nana Ashanti blog. Yeah. And now to tell everybody how we met, like share, share that with everybody, how we, uh, how we got there. How did we meet? I don't remember. Oh yeah. You know what? Yes. So I think I, I stumbled on you on um, Instagram mm -hmm. and I used to work for a magazine at the time, check out Africa and Ivor, the editor, he was like, you need to interview this guy. You know, because you were traveling a lot and you were posting all these pictures and it was kind of like, I don't know why, like people, it's always amazing when African Americans like tour Africa and do things like that. So he's like, I had to like interview you. And that's how like I came to meet Dinus off of his, his pictures on Instagram. Mm -hmm. That's what's up. So thank you for the support and thank you so much for coming yeah. on. I really appreciate it. It's nice to... Uh, I always have a good dialogue for, uh, you know, especially for everybody in the chat room who's watching. People in the chat room, thank you so much for coming on. You know, usually I will go a little bit longer, but yeah, I have to take my son, I have to, take my son to sign yeah. that too. <laughs> uh, but I'm always down to do a part two. Just let me know. And we can all always uh, continue the conversation. Uh, make sure you guys follow me. Search for Huru on Instagram. Please like uh, and follow me on Instagram. Uh, make sure if you're new to my YouTube, YouTube, make sure you're liking, make sure you're sharing the videos, and also make sure you subscribe as well. Uh, also, follow me on Snapchat, Twitter, and Facebook. Search for Huru. Make sure you go to dinosamir.com. Make sure you go to um, searchforhuru.com. And make sure you go to amazon.com and search your name, Dinosamir. I've written several books, so please support and buy them. People, thank you so much for coming on. Nana, well, I'm gonna have to talk to you later about your children's book, but we'll talk about that later on. Okay, that's that's cool. No problem. Anytime. Okay. Uh, everybody, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Share the info, uh, share the videos, make sure you support Nana as well on her blog. Yeah, make sure you support her blogs, please support her. Everybody, till next time, Dinah Samir, search for who the Confitant Don. Peace. <laughs> All right. <laughs>